Um, so, I, I think we actually should have the final countdown playing right before this chapter. Yes, actually, I was thinking of that as well. Rather than just of, replacing the, the regular usual. opening with that. Yes. I fully agree. That is exactly what I was thinking. Yes. So, trying again. And this time, I think I'm actually going to, to read the author's note at the beginning just because, well... I want to read the final thing that actually happens in the chapter at the end, so... Okay, let's go! Right. Chapter 44! Hey, Ed, Well, I have nothing to say but ever to one step glamming, okay? <laughs> but ever to one step glamming, okay? What have you left with any gothic people reading this? The new rogue! I love it, oh my god, I still can't wait for the movie! One Tom Flatten is so hot, lol, I hope Harry will become gothic because my friend told me he is really emo in this book! No, for the love of god, that should <laughs> never happen. <laughs> <laughs> One one thousand one hundred eleven oomph! Keep leaving Dubia pretty soon, I can't wait! Um, I said an I there where it wasn't supposed to be so. One thousand one hundred eleven oomph! Keep leaving Dubia One thousand one hundred eleven oomph! Keep leaving Dubia pretty soon, can't wait! This will probably be the. This will probably be the last chapter until I come back! And she never returned. Ever. 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 666. That's me core. That's me core. Shooted Draco angrily. But suddenly it was. But suddenly it was revealed who was in the car. It was. Snape! I shall free you, Lupin, but first you must help me kill these idiotic thunderheads. He said cruelly from the car as it flew so circumcising. <laughs> he said cruelly from the car as it flew circumcising above us. Ebony darkness, dementia, raven way, must be killed. Then the Dork Lord shall never die. You fucking prep! Yelled Draco. Then he looked at me sadly. I forgot to tell you, Nob. I forgot to Ebony. tell. Oh my god, typos, <laughs> reading correctly spelled sentences as typos, brain, arg. I forgot to tell you, Ebony. Snape made me, Snape made me do it with him. I didn't really have sex with him, but he's a ropist. So, is he like racist against ropes or something? <laughs> we, all put our, we all put our clothes on quickly, except Satan. We're so scarred. One, but Satan didn't change. Instead, he changed into a. Instead, <laughs> he changed into a man with green eyes, no nose, a grey robe, and white skin. Green eyes? I thought he had red eyes in this story. And oh my <laughs> God, she only mentioned the no nose thing once. <laughs> he had changed into Voldemort. One hundred and eleven. Funny, I thought he'd changed into Voldemort. Yes, so did I. I knew who thou were all along. He cackled evilly and sarcastically at me. Now I shall kill thee all. Thunder came in the room. No, pulls don't kill us, pleaded the vampire. Suddenly Willow, Bloody Mary, Di Suddenly Willow, Bloody Mary, Diabolo, Ginny, Dracula, Fred and George. Oh my god, she actually called them Fred and George. Fred and Gorge. Oh. Suddenly, Willow, Bloody Mary, Diabolo, Ginny, Dracula, Fred and Gorge, Hargrid, McGonagall. <sighs> Hargrid, McGonagall. Wait, 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 it's, it's McGonagall. It's McGonagall. Yes, I know. Hargrid, McGonagall, Dumbledore, Sirius, and Lucian all ran in. What is the meaning of this? Dumbledore. 
Dumbledore asked all angrily, and Voldemort looked away. Because Dumbledore is the only wizard! Dumbledore! Because Dumbledore is the only wizard! Dumbledore! Huh? It's Dumbledore! Not Dumbledore, Dumbledore! Because Dumbledore is the only wizard he's scared of! He did a spell, and suddenly his broomstick came to him sexily. <laughs> The word that like sexily should <laughs> never be used in a sentence involving Dumbledore or Voldemort. I, I'm just picturing his broomstick came to him sexily. Is that like in the Sorcerer's Apprentice animation for Disney? With the brooms that come to life and are like cleaning the room. Except this is like a, a broom that's come to life sexily. Well, anyway, Volksmort flew above the roof evilly on his broomstick. Oh my god! Slugborn gossiped. Get it, because I'm gothic! And, you know, I have to wonder, when are any of your characters going to get any lines in this chapter? Hey, I get the final word, so... Yeah. The Dark Lord shall kill all of you. Then you must submit to him. After you are already dead. <laughs> Snape ejaculated meaning Snape ejaculated menacingly. <laughs> of course the word thing is that word is actually used in the actual books as well. <laughs> you fucking pre you fucking preppy fags! Serious shoot Oh my god shouted! Sirius shouted angrily. <laughs> I know a four-letter word for Durs! Cruciatus! <laughs> Screamed Harry, but the sparks from his wand only... Screamed Harry, but the sparks from his wand only hit Draco's car. It fell down, Snap quickly crawled out of it and picked up the video camera. Oh my funny ducking god one! I cried because the video of me in the bathroom, the video of me doing it with Draco. Dong. Huh? The video, it, it, the video of me dong. Oh, I cried because the video of me doing it. Dong it with the Draco. Video of me in the bathroom, the video of me dong it with Draco, and the video of Satan doing it with. If you kill me, then these videos will be shown to everyone in the skull. Then you can be just like that gothic girl, Paris Hilton. He laughed meanly. Wait, Paris Hilton is a goth? <laughs> no! I screamed. FYI, I have that picture of you doing it with Lupin Eleven. What's she, what's she talking about? Lupin slurped as he sat in chains. I saw too, she's gonna show everyone the picture. 111, Harry shouted angrily. Shut up, 111, Lumpkin roared. Foolish ignorant muses! Yield Voldemort from his broomstick. Thou shall all die soon! Think again, you fucking mug. Think again, you fucking muggle poser! One! That is so something Harry would never say. <laughs> Seriously. Harry Harry yelled, and then he and Diabolo were unable to cast Blake Gun. Oh my gosh, no, it's not Diabolo. It's actually Diablo. Oh my god. Harry yelled, and then he and Diablo were unable to cast Blake Guns. But Voldemort took out his own one. Oh, guys are in the Latin standoff, 111. I shouted, bes I shouted disparately. Uh, disparately. Disparately. I shouted disparately. Disparately. <laughs> Is that how I should pronounce it? Disparately. I shouted disparately. Acunim! Acunim is one eleven! <laughs> cried Voldry Morton. Suddenly Neville's wind was in his hand. No, I shall kill the old and Ebony. You will die! Eleven thousand one hundred and eleven! 
He made lightning come all over the place. Nope, lighting. He lighting. made lightning come all over the place. Save us, Endo! Save us, Ebony! Dumbledark cried. Ooh, a bit of 30 H's there. Really? I do not remember any Dumbledarks in that story. I remember Dumblecops and Scramblegorks. Yeah, the... but... Well, there, there was Dumblecop of the Dark Meal. Ah, oh, right. So you just compress that and you get Dumbledark. I cried sexily. I just wanted to go to the Conmen room and... Oh my god, she didn't say Conmen room. I she cried... said Conmen room. I cried sexily. I just wanted to go to the Conmen room and slit my wrists with my friends while we watched Shark Attack 3 and Saw 2 and do it with Draco, but I knew I had to do something more important. <gasps> but I knew I had to do something more impotent. I shoot it. <gasps> the end. end. Well, that was terrible. <sighs> so, I, I think the uh, the final analysis might be a separate section. But that being said, getting started on that. Unlike Dark, sorry, unlike Light and Dark, The Adventures of Dark Yagami, My Immortal has no actual hidden logical timelines beneath it, and everything makes absolutely no sense. Well, I must admit, that was honestly not exactly the kind of tone I was actually thinking of for this story. I was thinking of more talking about it like it is some great mm, liter mm, literary masterpiece, actually. Well, I suppose we can do that. I'm just stating critically from my first note, well, at where Light and Dark had a hidden plot and underlying timeline that made almost perfect sense if you overanalyzed it to the point of the fabric of reality coming unwoven because you were picking it apart like crab meat out of a crab leg. <laughs> Why does that sound like a metaphor that our Yigami would use? And I just call this a metaphor, not a simile. What is wrong with me? Also, oh my god, this recording session didn't even take 10 minutes, or a bit more than 10 minutes, but it didn't even take 15 minutes anyway. I think we were so desperate to get through it. I mean, we got through it properly. I think we were just desperate to get through it, and that pushed us to get through it fairly quickly. Yes, I suppose. Because... Ah! Indeed. So, what did you enjoy most about this story? Hmm, what indeed? That is a very good question. Because honestly, this story is kind of horrible. Uh, what are you talking about? This is a great literary masterpiece. I especially liked the part where they were gothic. <laughs> and the part where she put on the Blake clothes. <laughs> well, I suppose I did like the part where Snap was possessed by Snap. <laughs> And I, I liked how detailed her descriptions were. Yes, her descriptions of stuff that wasn't clothing. Which she should have explained in more detail, totally. I mean, like, everything yeah, else no, was... This, this story did not have enough clothing in it. Indeed. I couldn't tell what the characters were dressing. In fact, sometimes it, sometimes I got the impression that the characters were running around totally naked. Yes, I knew. And I, I loved all the times that Voldemort showed up and said he was going to kill Draco if Ebony did not kill Vampire. And never and acted out leave. on that. Yes. And let's see. Hmm. Well, I was fascinated by her commentary on contempor contemporary Gothic culture. I think she did a lot of research. 
she was especially well versed in the Harry Potter books, I must say. I mean, who knew that uh, Voldemort went to Hogwarts in the 1980s? Yes, I knew. That is very fascinating. So yeah, and I'm not saying that we do seem to be having the extremely sophisticated discussion now, but it doesn't quite sound sophisticated enough. Maybe we should have some classical music in the background? Well, I was thinking of just actually playing the actual My Immortal song, but maybe classical music would fit better. But I meant uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, play My Immortal to send us off in the end. But I meant more just the tone of how, it, um, how we're actually saying it. I was thinking of starting with something like, And so, that is the end of Tara Gillespie's literally masterpiece, is My Immortal. Just trying to sound really gentle, man-ish or something. Perhaps I would sound even better if I tried sounding a bit posh. What do you think? Yes, probably. Unfortunately, I don't have my cup of tea at the moment. My quality important tea. Speaking of which, I was totally thinking of having this conversation set to just imagery of, sit of us sitting by a table drinking tea. I would... I would be uh, quite approving of that, yes. Now, I must say, she put excellent warnings as to the content of her fan fiction, considering that some audiences would not have been able to take such radical, revolutionary information and dialogue and commentary on the Gothic culture and the ongoing strife between the Goths and those funny ducking preps. Yes, indeed. Also, I must say that the, f that the plot... Also, I must say that the plot twists in this story were quite shocking and exceptional. Oh yes, exceptionally exceptional. Like, who would have thought that Draco would turn out to actually be kidnapped by Voldemort after having been found dead? That was quite a, that was quite a surprise that was quite a surprising turn. And then, who would have thought that? Wormtail was actually called Snaketail and actually 16. That was a fantastic reinterpretation of his character on behalf of Tara Gillespie. Yes, it certainly was. Also, I must say, the ending to this story is very daring. It ends in the middle of the final cli um, final it ends in the middle of the final showdown in a, what is commonly known as a Bolivian army ending, except that it's not the hero who is in danger at the very end, but the villain. This makes me believe that this story is actually supposed to be a tragedy, and that the final scene is meant to just indicate the tragedy of Tar- um, That the final scene is meant to indicate the tragedy of N.O.B. being unable to turn Voldemort back to the good side and being forced to kill him. Indeed. They were developing such a fantastic relationship. Although, I must say, I'm very much a Voldemort headwing shipper myself, so I can't say I would have fully enjoyed shipping Ebony and Voldemort together. I'm actually quite fond of seeing her with Draco. Yes, that re that relationship was also very well developed and intriguing, and I would not have liked to see it go in a different direction. I especially think, after all the time she put into developing the build-up of their relationship from the moment they met and going from just a very light, friendly relationship to eventually their first kiss, and their tender embraces by the lake, watching the giant squid and eating toast. And finally, when they decided to take it to the next level after going to a good Shralit concert. Yes, it was all very heartwarming, was it not? Oh, very heartwarming. Taken very slow and with great detail. Very easy to identify with. Indeed. And her grammar, her grammar is absolutely flawless. Yes, it certainly is. And she had, I will admit, there was a lot of very daring social commentary in here when it came to talking about topics such as the, uh, the creeps in American schools and addiction to substances such as Volksimort serum. Yes. What did you think of that? I think that these topics were all dealt with very carefully and sensitively and treated with complete respect. 
I have spoken to several of my friends who previously had such experiences with addictions, and they thought that this story portrayed it very accurately and faithfully. Clark Senpai, I need you to answer something for me honestly. And for our audience, have you ever tried Volximort Serum? I am, I am happy to say that I have not. Someone tried to get me into it once, but I, but I barely managed to get out of it. Well, I'm glad. After all, it's a very difficult addiction to beat. You have to drink vampire blood to get over that addiction, and of course, once you drink vampire blood, under the right conditions, you become a vampire yourself, you become incredibly gothic, and then you have a chance to be in a gothic band, but if you break your arm, then you can't be in the gothic band anymore. It's really quite complicated. There's a whole recovery process you go through. You have to change your entire lifestyle, all because of this addiction. Yes, I know. And that would be very tragic if that were to happen to me. I am very glad it has not. Thank Actually, that sounded a bit listen. overly selfish, I should just say. Yes, I know. And I am very glad that I did not have to go through such an ordeal. And I feel great sympathy for all those I know who have had to deal with that. To any of our listeners, if you suffer from an addiction to Volksimortis... Sorry. To any of our listeners, if you suffer from an addiction to Volksimort serum, please let us know what we are here for you. Yes, indeed. But more importantly than anything else... Fuck yeah! We just finished this story! Oh yeah. Oh what? yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes! No more gothic clothes descriptions! No more completely ridiculous plot twists that make no sense! No more blatant disregard of the canon! I just freaking beat this story! Take that, Tara Gillespie, who might not actually exist. And no more choking over my own trachea when I'm voicing Ebony. Indeed! Or... <laughs> I should probably not be happy about that because, you know, that's really not my problem, technically. But... <laughs> okay, you don't have to read any more long-winded clothing descriptions. Indeed! <sighs> and you'll never have to come across a sentence again that goes, Bloody Mare shook her head energetically lethargically. But Bloody Mare shook her head energetically lethargically. Um, I think I still pronounced it wrong, but... I got through it once! Like, I got through it without doing any retakes here! <sighs> now, this is a note I want to throw in for, um, for our listeners. If I've not pointed it out before, or if you've never caught it, um, I'm not sure if her name's Grey... Is, is it Grey Delise? Or Grey Delisle? Or... Because I always mix up the pronunciation of her last name, but that voice actor that voiced Vicky and Fairly Odd Parents and like countless other characters, the one that's famous for having a screechy, terrifying voice, that was who I was trying to emulate for e Ebony or Enaby or Ebobby or Tata or Tara or Ta Ebery or whatever else she's called, Ebony, not Mary Sue. Well,. I did not notice that. Of course, I don't think I've really seen that so much in English anyway, I mean... Being that, you know, I live in Norway and they always just showed it in Norwegian here, so, like, yeah. Although, sadly, this means no more... no more getting to... I, I don't know. What are we going to miss about this fanfiction? Um, Tom there... Bombadil! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to miss Tom Bombadil. That's about it. Oh, and uh, counting all the times she says cross. <laughs> yes. Although I will note again, I'm looking at chapter 10 right now, and she says... The only way you can kill a vampire is with a C-R-O-S-S. -S. There's no way I'm writing that. But because she types this whole story, she never technically wrote the word cross. Again, brilliant! So I think that's probably the deepest revelation in the story. Indeed. And now, what to read next? Or wait, I actually already know that, but just for fun, let's just... What to read next? Hmm. 
Or of course, I suppose I, mm, I should rather say, What's to read next after that one thing I've already decided on reading next, which I will be announcing that I will be reading next at the end of this video? Well, not face the strange. Definitely not! Because the last thing we need after this is another Potter fic. Well, there was this one Harry Potter fanfiction that I actually thought of doing a reading of once, but I co sort of felt like it would be pointless because it's not at all a bad story, it's just, well, it's actually intentionally funny, so... Have you ever heard of the fanfic Oh God, Not Again? I haven't, but that sounds delightful. Yeah, well, it's basically Harry getting sent back in time by accident to the, to the beginning of his years at school and uh, partially trying to make sure that not all of his friends die horribly and partially just uh, doing a shit ton of crazy stuff. And, that sounds amazing. And constantly predicting the future and blaming it on his psychic scar. Mind you, not that he is psychic, just his scar is. Well, let me see. There is a famous there is a famous story that a friend told me about. But I need to look up what the title is. Let's see. Oh yeah, and also, in the meantime, I should just give a special sh mm, shout-out to, mm, to the YouTube user BloodRaven100... Mm, I should just give a special mm, shout-out to the YouTube user BloodRaven1776. Blood mm, no, I am not reading how I saved the world! That story just... Uh... No, that's not so bad that even we're not reading it, just... Indeed, just reading it pissed me off.